scripture there. Amen. Then I'm going to go over to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Good to have Jerry with us this morning. It's good to have each and every one of you. Amen. I pray that God just blesses you in a mighty way. Beautiful. <coughs> Isaiah chapter 64, verse 8. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Just keep your finger in Romans. I'll be there in a minute. And then I got some more scriptures. I don't know how far I get with it this morning. But thou, Lord, thou art the Father, we are the clay, thou art the Father, and we all are the work of thy hand. I, see. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about that a little bit, but then again, I want you to really think about this. As you look at the world today, what do you see as far as the clay? Uh, most of the things I see on TV are bickering, arguing. Most of the things I see in the world are bickering and arguing and fussing and killing. And that's what I see. I mean, you know, it's uh, not love, compassion. It's not, uh, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, I will give you peace, I will give you rest. Uh, what's mine's mine, and I'm going to take care of mine, and you're not going to have any of it. Yes, bless the Lord. That's what we see. <coughs> We wonder why our children are the way they are. We buy them things and we stick them in a room. We shut the door. We tell them to turn on the TV or play the game. Right, come on. They're molded to what we make them. Right. We're molded to what the world is in a lot of ways. The reason we're molded that way a lot of the time is because we're not in the Word. Amen. The Word will make you whole. The Word yes. will make you free. Right. But whenever we come to an altar of prayer, we only get saved. Praise God. To get in Christ and stay in Christ, then you must get in the Word. Amen. The Word will set you free. The Amen. Word will make you free. And Amen. Praise God. This Word will clean you. Yes, this Word will make you what God wants you to be. Yes. Whenever you look at the uh, clay, I, I was down, uh, I took a cow down last, uh, I don't know, probably sometime this year, a couple cows down to be killed. And whenever I was coming back through Seagrove there, I was looking at some of the pottery that they had setting out there, and it just glistened. I mean, it was just so shiny. It was just so perfect. It was just, just a really a glistening uh, clay that they had touched. Just no dirt. Really, that's what it is. This Praise dirt God. sand. And they mixed the water with it, and they formed it into something, and then they put it into a oven and fire it. And whenever it comes out, it comes out with a glistening, a, a shine that's unreal. And then they, they coat it with whatever they coat it with, and, and whenever it comes out, it's just beautiful. You know, it, it's uh, uh, and it's just... Thank you, part of the earth. Thank you, Nothing special. Thank you, you know, we're just part of the earth. Mm -hmm. right. Nothing special. Mm -hmm. Dirt and water. That's all we are. Yes. And some people think they're so beautiful. And if they could just look inside and see what they were, they're just dirt and water. Uh -huh. right. Nothing special. There's not a one of us in here that's any special than the other. You say, Amen. Well, my dirt comes from down south. My dirt's Ooh. better than yours. Or my dirt comes up north. My dirt's better than yours. No, we all the same. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're created in God's image. Thank you, Lord. Right. Every man is created in God's image. Yes. But sometimes we forget those things. Sometimes we forget that we're supposed to be like Christ. Sometimes we forget that we're supposed to act like Christ. And I believe sometimes we're, we're letting the mold... Uh, not work the way it's supposed to work because we're not in the Word. We're not uh, adhering to the Word. We're not listening to the Word. We're not letting the Word get in us. And we're not letting the Word come through us. The only way that we can be molded by God is letting God have His free hand in our life. Right. Amen. And you know, a lot of people say, well, God, you can go so far, but then I'm going to take over. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And that's exactly what's happening in the churches today. Right. Yes. They'll let God in, but as soon as God wants to take that's control... Right. Oh, wait a minute. Right. Wait a minute, Lord. We don't do those things. We don't have Sunday night services. We don't have Wednesday night services, Lord. Now, you know, Lord, uh, our people get tired. Our people's got to work. Right, right. And don't worry about Sunday school. We don't need no Sunday school. 
You see, you might be sitting at home thinking these same things. Why have we got to have all these services? Why have we got to do all these things? Because God needs some time to mold you yes. to be what you yes. need to be. Amen. God needs some time to really take you and, and put you into that. And you say, well, we come to church. We have scenes. We have preaching. What kind of molding is that? Well, if you sit in front of the TV and you listen to the TV, I don't care if you didn't listen to nothing but the news. What kind of molding would you have there? Bickering and fussing and arguing. Complaining. You say, well, I'll just watch the weather. Well, the people That's complain right. about the weather. That's right, bro. It's too hot. It's too cold. It's raining, and I don't want it raining. Yeah, Farmer wants right. rain, and everybody else don't want rain. You see, there's problems in all this world with everybody because we're all different. And whenever we come to church, sometimes we bring our problems with us. And then we try to put our problems on somebody else. Because we right. haven't been molded by God's hand. Right. And God ain't really right. took it. Uh, we haven't let God take his hand and mold That's us to right. be what we need to be. Lord, and we God, say, God. well, if I was in charge, I would change this. If I was in charge, I would change that. Well, let me tell you something. God's in charge. And hey, hey, God, hey, if you hey, change the mind of God, you change it to be whatever you want. Come on, brother. And yes. that's the way we got to look at it. God. As long as God's in charge, we have to change the mind yes. of God. He was the, he is the, we're, we're just no clay. We're just dirt. And, and God took, whenever he took Adam, he took him out and, and he just took the dust and formed it into a man's body. Right. Breathed into his nostrils. And praise God, he became a living man. Uh -huh. Nothing special. Mm. But Lord, brother Ken, you don't know me. I'm special. I've got the world by the tail. Everything's going my way. Hang on, honey. I've been there. It's going to get worse. That's right. It's right. going to get worse. It ain't going to be long. Because through tribulation, we become closer to God. Yes. And you see, that's whenever God's Amen. molding us. Amen. That's whenever God's that's bringing right. us back to his realm. That's whenever God's taking us back to where we need to be. Some of you wonder why things are happening to me. Why are they, all of these things happening to me? Why are these things not taking place in my life like they are in other people's lives? Why is not God not blessing me like he is other people? Maybe God's got you going through tribulation uh, to mold right. you a little bit. Yeah. Maybe God's trying to show you that you need to come back in. Yeah, I don't probably none of you in here is old enough to ever plow a horse or a mule or anything. But uh, I used to have to do that. We I plow the taters with them and praise God. He was out there plowing the taters and that old mule or a horse get out of the trace and he'd take his lead and he'd keep doing this number and I'd get mad and I'd have to go out there and unhook the chain, go back and get him in the traces to get him back where he needed to be, to mold him where he Ooh. needed to pull that plow. Because if you didn't, he was trying to pull it with one leg and go sideways and the plow would go every which way because you couldn't, you couldn't hold it because he was going at his way. But if you get him back in those traces and get him to jihad a little bit, he'd go on and he'd do what he needed to do. But praise God, I'm going to tell you something. Our problem is today that we don't know what jihad is. Yes. <laughs> That's right. God tells us to do one thing and we want to go the other way. Right. We're sort of, we don't want to be molded. We don't want to be what God wants us to be. We want to be our own man. We want to be our own woman. We want to be what we are. Uh, and God forgive me, but I don't know whether men want to be men and women want to be women anymore, not from what I hear. I don't know what they are, I'll be honest with you. But praise God, I was born a boy, and praise God, I grew up to be a man. And I'm a man, but I ain't going to change the way I am. You don't need it. Praise God, you're a woman, there ain't nothing wrong with it. Be what you want. Because God created you. And let God take the throne. Now turn with me to Romans chapter 12 right quick. Verse 1. Yes. Thank you, Lord. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. This is Paul talking to the church here now. Holy, <coughs> acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. We should be a living sacrifice unto God. Amen. You say, Brother Ken, I Praise didn't have God. time to shine my shoes this morning That's when right. I'm in church. God don't care about your shoes. Right, right. Your shoes can have a little dust on them. God don't care. Ooh. God's worried about your spirit. Yes. God's worried about your soul. That's right. God's worried about where your man is. God's right. where that man of God's at inside. Right. God's right. worried about whether he's clean or not. Right. That's all God's worried about. He's worried about whether your shoes are dusty. He ain't worried about, you know, uh, you've been coming to church and, uh, uh, well, Debbie, she, sometimes she'll spill coffee on something and, and she'll be fussing. Well, I spill coffee all down the front of that. And she'll be there trying to get it out, but you can't get it out. It's there. It's stained. It's there. It's molded to what, what you're wearing. And whenever you come in, you don't have to tell nobody you spilled coffee on him. 
They bless the Lord. They find it out because it's spotty. It's spotty. Yeah, amen. And that's exactly what's wrong with people today. They don't let God mold them. Right. They're spotty. Amen. They're, 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 they're conformed to the world. And that's exactly what people are doing. They're not living, living that living sacrifice and they form to the world and the worldly things. Praise God. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, just go out and look a little while and you'll find out that people that go to church are doing everything that the world's doing. They're doing it on God's day or whenever they need to do it. Praise God. There's no there's no worshiping God and putting God first. It's all about what I want to do and when I want to do it. And, how I want to do it. and we sanctify everything to be what we want it to be. God doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. God's still got a standard that we got to live to. Yes. And that's where we need to be in the Word. That's where the Word will set you free. That's where the Word will make you free. That's where the Word will clean you up. That's where the Word Amen. will give you what Amen. you need. If we'll get that's in this right, Word. That's right. Come on. Amen. That's right. And be not conformed to this Word. And that's what I've been talking to you about. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Thank you, Lord. This molding starts in your mind. Amen. It starts in your thinking. Yes, Lord. It starts a lot of time with stinking thinking. Mm -hmm. And you got to get the stinking thinking out mm -hmm. to get the good thinking in. Woo. Amen. <laughs> you say, Brother Ken, how do I do that? In all her prayer. Amen. <laughs> Praying and asking yeah. God to clean my mind. Lord, help me to have good thoughts. Lord, help me to have pure thoughts. Uh, you ever wake up in the morning and the devil give you a bad dream and you wish you could just smack him in the mouth just, I don't know, just as hard as you could? And think, what in the world am I dreaming something like that for? You see, the devil will take control of your mind and he's trying to mold your mind while you sleep. Right. He'll make you mad at somebody. He'll, he'll take whatever happened that day and maybe you got upset with somebody. He'll take that in the middle of the night and he'll make that thing grow and grow and grow and he'll try and tear you apart with it. So whenever you wake up in the morning, you feel like you need to pray and get a hold of God before you get out of the bed. And praise God, most of the time that's what we do. Because Amen. praise God, we can't get up with those stinking thinkings on our mind. We have to get up and say, God, cleanse me for what the devil yeah, does. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, help yeah, me to yeah, have pure right. thoughts, God. Help me to have those thoughts that are wonderful. God. Help me to have those thoughts that glorify you, not the thoughts that I want to have. Because the devil comes at us even in the middle of the night. That's the reason whenever you lay down to uh, sleep at night, you need to pray, God, protect me, Lord. Take this mind, God, and protect this mind. Clean it and purify it, God. I pray to God. Hallelujah. Yes, come on, brother. I go to the nursing home sometimes visiting. You visit with some people that, that's got Alzheimer's or they've got uh, some of these other things that or either they've had uh, brain injuries and things like this, and, and, and sometimes they'll curse and fuss, get mean. But you know, I've noticed most people that know Jesus and their bodies and their minds have been molded to Jesus. Uh -huh. Even whenever things like this happen yes, in their life, a lot of times, exactly. that never comes out. Amen. Because God's anointing comes out of them. They might become yes. a preacher or they might become something different, but most of the time, things like that don't come out of them because God's anointing is so real. God's love is so real. You can take control of it. You can control this mind. God can take control of it. Yes, Lord. Yes, touch it, Father. I was in the middle of a crowd of people the other day, men, and one of the guys that was there, whenever he goes to the beach, he wears long sleeves and he wears breeches. And whenever he goes out to the pool or he goes to the ocean. And one of the men asked me, he said, do you do that? And I said, no. Do I carry with swim trunks on? He said, well, I didn't think you did. And they asked me, he said, well, do you think that purifies your body? Keep on your clothes whenever you go out there. Now, I might be wrong while I'm getting ready to tell you, but this is what I feel like in my heart. I'm not going to lust after your wife, no way. Praise God. And I'm so ugly, your wife ain't going to lust after me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and for me to have talk that comes out of my mouth that's not pure anyway, 
And then I go out there and wear long breeches and a long shirt. You understand what I'm trying to say? We try to cover up who we are sometimes by acting like we're holier than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. In other words, you know, the men, they'll act like, you know, they're holier than that whenever they're next to their wife. And then whenever they get out with the men. Mm -hmm. Right. Give it. Women, y'all do the same thing. You know. <laughs> women used to not do that, but women are meaner than men now. I'll be honest with you. They are. You go somewhere as a woman to cuss you out. I mean, women cuss now. Like, you used to not hear women cuss whenever I was little, or either they didn't cuss around me or something. I don't know. But you go places now, and women curse worse than men. Yeah. I don't know what the problem is. They've got molded into the world. That's what it is. They've got molded into what they hear. And they think it makes them look good. That's right. And they're trying to cover up who they are. They're trying to be tough. That's right. But the word of God says you're the weaker sex. I'm sorry. You need a man to take care of you. Yes. You need a man to love you. Yes. Praise God. You need somebody to care for you. Praise Don't get mad at me. It's the truth. The yes. Word of God says that. Mm-hmm. You say, I don't have all that. Well, praise God, you can get it. Uh-huh. Amen. Pray and ask God to give right. it to you. Yes. Be molded to what God wants you to be. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, women, some of these women try to do a man's job. You weren't made to do a man's job all day. You weren't made for that. It's too hard for you. Men, you ain't no woman. <laughs> don't talk like one and don't act like one. Amen. Be a man. God molded you to be what you were supposed to be. Whenever, whenever you came out of the womb, praise God, you are a man or a woman. You did not come out as it. Right. You are yes. You are a man or woman. Right. Thank you, Lord. And God calls it. Thank you, Lord. Yes, he does. Thank you, Lord. His word. He called Adam, Adam. He called Eve, Eve. Right. So he called it. I didn't. But this is what the world is getting to. This is where the world's at. The molding of the world is, is not what God wants. Amen. Amen. They say now you've got to be politically correct whenever you mm. call somebody. He or she. Uh-oh. Whenever it gets down to that, if you ain't my brother or sister, because I call you brother and sister in Christ whenever we're brother and sister. So if you ain't my brother and sister, whenever I go outside of the church, I reckon I'll have to call them it's. Because I don't know what they are. I cannot decide sometimes. That's right. I seen a guy yesterday had stepped out and I asked Debbie, I said, I guarantee you that's a man. He was dressed just like a woman. He sort of looked like a woman, but you could tell by his arms he was a man. Tail by his legs, he was a man. Tail by his Adam, he was a man. But he dressed just like a woman. And he was a right pretty good looking man. But let me tell you something. It was a mess. Who in the world wants to change their body? Who in the world wants to change who they are? Whenever God has already given us the day. You see, God's trying to mold us. God's trying to draw us back into what we need to be. And you say, Brother Ken, why are you preaching this? Because, praise God, I hear it every day. I see it every day, and you do too. And we need to be molded into God's yes. way. Yes. Right. Come on, brother. We need the Holy Ghost to come to have freedom in the yes. And praise right. God, whenever we are presented with these things, praise God, we need to cast them out of our eyes. Like, yes. I don't want my eyes all messed up right. with all these things going on in the world. And I say, God, I'm on it with the Holy Sabbath of God. And yes. God, clean them up. And this old nasty word. That's the name of God. Yes, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Mm. I've asked God. Amen. I've asked God if, if I was out, got out of my right mind, or if I got to where I couldn't take care of myself to take me home before that happened. Yes. Because I want to don't want to be a hindrance to nobody. I don't want to be a hindrance to nobody. And I'm ready to go home. Hey. Jesus, don't let me stay here one minute longer than I have to stay. Yes. Don't let me have to stay and go through no tribulation, no hey, nothing man. like that, God. Hey, I want to go with you, Lord. I don't want to have to go. Hey, 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 I'm willing to wait on my sins. You say, Brother 
little kid, if you go home, will you tell your wife to get you something? I'm sure will. I don't mind asking every now and then, but praise God, I don't do it every time. But I don't mind. Brother Ken, you go home, you throw your clothes down the middle floor, I sure don't. I put them where they belong, and most of the time I put them in the hey. washing machine after that. I'm going to tell you something. Amen. We're in this thing to love one another. We're not even right. 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 to right. destroy it. I did not marry this woman to take care of me. I married this woman to be my helpmate, and praise God, that's that's right. we work together. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's what it's that's all about. Right. We need to be molded in God's hands. We need to be molded in God's hands. Myself. I don't know how she feels about it. She might think I ought to do more. Praise God. <laughs> For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Praise God. Amen. So, in other words, to be molded to what God wants me to be, I've got to have a measure of faith. And I think that's what's happened to the world. They've been molded by the world and what the world thinks. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to be politically correct in everything that they do. They're trying to make sure that they are accepted by the world. And unfortunately, that's where the church is today, too. They're wanting to be accepted by the world. It might be the biggest lie I've ever been told, but they tell me this church right over here at Moxville that the preacher will go out back and smoke a joint with some of the young guys before he goes in and preaches. Mm -hmm. And it's telecasted to Winston-Salem. I think that now they've got two or three other churches that it's telecasted to whenever he hits the pulpit. Mm -hmm. So in other words, his spiritual man needs a little Smoke to help, I reckon. I don't know. In other words, he has lost his first love for God. And what he's doing, he's molding his people to be a worshiper of a devil. Oh, Brother Ken, that can't happen in church. It does. It does. I've seen people that thought their preacher was up on a pedestal. They thought some preacher that preaches on TV was up on a pedestal. They thought that this man over here, he was up on a... Let me tell you something, honey. Your pedestal will fall. Amen. Yes, sir. That's right. Whenever right. you're molded, you let Jesus mold you. Amen. Amen. Don't you let the devil mold you. Don't you, yes. let, don't you let some man mold you. Don't you that's let him right. mold you. I'm not trying to mold you. What did I tell you from the start? Right. I told you to get in the Word. Ooh. And that's what I'm giving you right now is the Word. That's right. Because Thank I want this Word to mold you to be that Christian, that child of God, that whenever the thoughts that come out of your mind and out of your mouth are the pure thoughts of God, Lord that you won't God, have to be looking around your brother and sister and seeing all the wrong that your brother and sister's doing. But praise God, most of the time, you, whenever you start looking at the Word of God, you'll find your own problem. I like to say this, and I know some of you have heard it all your life, but not, and I know time's quick for the past, but I'll try and close here in just a minute. But, I'm, but whenever, whenever I'm out on my back porch, I'm talking about my spiritual back porch back here, I find that a lot of things need to be cleaned up. I find that I've let things lay. You ever go by somebody's house? I mean, used to back whenever I was young. You know, everybody piled everything out on the front porch and the back porch. They'd have boxes piled out there. They'd have old couches sitting out there. They'd have recliners. There's a house up there on 52. Right now, there's the old people live there. You can tell it's an older house. And they got every couch and chair they've ever took out of the house. They're all the way around that porch. It's a old, big old house. And they're all the way around there. They don't throw them away. They just put them on the front porch. They cleaned out their house, but everything's on the front porch. Now, I ain't talking about people. What I'm talking about is this. If I was going to run somebody down, and I'd say, you know, you need to clean up your back porch because it's in a mess. Praise but I ain't molding my back porch to be what it's supposed to be. That's right. right, come on. That's right. That's right. I'm speaking out of turn. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Because if I really cleaned up my life Thank and really you. kept my life in tune with God, I wouldn't have time to look at you. Amen. 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 
Right. Whenever I come in here to preach to you, and whenever I come in here to give you what God has given me, most of the time what I've done, I've prayed and I've sought God's face. And a lot of times whenever I preach, well, God's speaking to me also. God's trying to tell me Amen. I've got things I need to do in my life. I need to take some of the old uh, the, the roughness around the edges and let God mold it to be where it needs to be. Because Amen. sometimes, you know, our old tempers, and you know, you can take a piece of steel, and if it ain't got some temper, it ain't worth a nickel. That's right. But you put too much temper in it, and you know what it'll do? It'll break. Mm -hmm. It's just got to be enough, exactly enough. But what's happening today is people have been molded by the world, and their temper is so... Mm, the devil has got control of their minds, their heart, and their soul. And if you do something to me, I'm going to get back at you. I will make sure that you won't find no peace, that you won't find no happiness in your life. It's just like cleaning up your own back porch, praise God. Uh, I'll make sure that you're just as miserable as I am if I can. And that's the reason we see people going in with guns and killing one another because they don't think nothing about life. They've been molded to care nothing about a soul. They've been molded to care nothing about one another. I, and no children, men, whatever, don't matter to them. Women, it don't matter to them. If they, they don't care about you. They don't love you. It's because they've been molded to live like a devil and act like a devil. But I want to tell you something. There's a God that loves us and a God that holds us. And if you want to make them clean us up, you take that man God up and we've been molded to be what God wants us I hope that you let God mold you to be that vessel that God can use. Thank you, Lord. I, I want to thought about whenever I was a young boy in church, I remember that they had a Sunday school teacher that was in the church and he was a real big guy, fat, like me, I reckon probably bigger than me. I was a little black man, praise God, everything was big to me. We went back to that house where I was born up, I raised up and I thought it was huge. We got back over in the yard, was little and the house was little and I said, Lord, this ain't the place I'd raised, but it was. It looked big whenever I was there. But he taught the teenagers and you'd hear all the teenagers talking about how fat he was, how big he was. And you know the parents didn't say nothing to him. Where I was at, the house I was at, they would talk about him like that, how fat and big and rosy he was. And he, he took out his time to study the Sunday school lesson. He took out his time to, to mold those teenagers to what they were supposed to be. And then the parents didn't say nothing to him. Parents let them do what they want to do. Now, this is back whenever I was a little. This is back whenever I was probably seven years old, eight years old. I can remember this. And, and the parents didn't make them say nothing to them. They let them do what, say whatever they want to say. Well, I think about those kids now. A lot of them turned out to be homosexual. A lot of them, brothers and sisters, don't even talk to one another. I just wonder. What kind of molding was the parents doing, Christian molding, for those children? Have you thought about that? We're molding the children around here. Yes. And if they hear us sitting around talking about one another, right. if they hear us sitting around running down one another because right. we're fat, we're ugly, or because we bald-headed, or whatever, you know, just anything they can use it for. This young man, this brother over here, his son calls me Colonel Sanders. I like it because Colonel Sanders got a hair. Praise God. He's <laughs> <laughs> got chicken too. I like that too. That's right. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? He doesn't do it out of disrespect. He likes me. That's he likes right. me. He does it because he likes me. And I like that. I like for somebody to distinguish me some way they like me. I appreciate that. I really do. But you know, there's times, there's times that we need to correct our children. Sometimes we need to correct the brothers and sisters. Amen. Because we're all growing up. You say, brother.
Ken, I'm 78 years old. Still growing up. You're going to graduate one of these days. Praise God. And if you graduate to heaven, you've made the right choice and you've been molded the right way. Right. But if you have to go to that eternal fire and damnation, because you wouldn't accept the molding of God, because you wouldn't let God put you in the place that you needed to be, of hell you're going to look back and wish oh man I wished if that's a word I wished I'd have done different Mm -hmm. I wished whenever that old preacher was up there and he was trying to get me to come to an altar I wish I'd have come so God could have molded me to be what I need to be I wished I'd have let the spirit of God prick my heart and went to that altar and prayed and prayed through to God I wish I'd kept my spirit on me not talked about my brother and sister, but loved them. I wished I would have taught Sunday school whenever God called me to. I wish I would have sung whenever God called me to sing. I wish I'd have been that preacher whenever God called me to preach. But in the midst of hell, molded to be what you want to be, in the midst of fire that you can quench not, burn but no flame, Yes. And look up. And no peace, no happiness. Who had you rather be molded by? The world and the devil? Our Heavenly Father. Amen. That Amen. loves Amen. you. Amen. Thank you, God. If you're here this morning and you're not letting God mold you, you're not letting God mold those rough edges. You're not letting him reach down and keep you molded. You see, whenever you work with a, a clay, until that thing goes into fire, it's got to it's got to be worked with. It's got to stay in that same form. It's got it's got to be worked with because if you if you don't get it up to what it needs to be, then it'll just flop over. I watched them try to mold some of that stuff, and they bring their hands up, and they just follow their hand. You let somebody that don't know what they're doing, and they'll start molding, and that stuff will just stop. Flying. If I was going to do it, they'd just do this, and they'd be going everywhere, because I wouldn't know how to hold my hands. But if they know how to hold their hands, that stuff will stop. Mm-hmm. You see, we have a Heavenly Father. Amen. 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 His hands might have a, some nail prints in them. Yes, praise the Lord. But praise God. They're tender. And he knows how to mold it. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. And maybe you've been a little tough on Jesus lately. And you haven't been letting him mold you. Maybe you need a renewing of your soul in the altar. Maybe you need a renewing of your spirit in the altar. Don't go out the same way you can. That's right. Let Jesus mold Thank you to be what he wants you to do. But thine be done, Lord. Amen. You're here this morning. And you need to come to this altar. You need to pray. God will meet you here. Anyone else want to pray this morning? Anyone else? Anyone else? Come. Come. Come unto me, ye that are heavy laden. I will give you peace. I will give you rest. Just let me mold you. And I'll give you what you need. Anyone else want to pray? Anyone else? Won't you come? Won't you come? Anyone else? Let him clean the edges. Let him help you clean your back doors. Get all that old dirty stuff off of it. And then say, God, purify it with a heavenly host. Let them sit on my back doors. And lead me and guide me. What a heavenly father we have. If you're here this morning, and you don't know which way to turn, I promise you, Turn into Jesus. Amen. In the right room. Turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. He'll meet you here. Anyone else want to pray? Anyone else? Mold me. Mold me. Make me what I need to do. Yes, say amen.
Shake hands and be friendly. You're just me. 